the games that are, uh, you know, that they may have heard about one time. People go in, they look and see what the top five or ten games on their cell phone is. And placement up there, it's not, it's not necessarily a meritocracy, it's somebody making semi-random decisions. So that's incredibly frustrating. Wolfenstein, I, or Wolf RPG on the iPhone, is something like 50 megs. You know, it's just got, it's blown out with super high-res artwork and sound and all this stuff. Uh, although it was amusing when I, I wound up doing the 3D acceleration on the Wolfenstein RPG for the iPhone. That was one of those uh, interesting things where they sent us the first build of the game and we're like, wow, this looks really good with all this high-res art. Why is it so slow? You know, what's going on? And it turned out they had just taken the software renderer, and this was done by Firemint, the, the company that's done some really successful games. That's why I was shocked at this, because they've done some great stuff on the iPhone. But they just took the software renderer and rendered it out on there, so it's chugging along really awful. And I was like, no, you have to do this in hardware acceleration. And they moaned and complained, said there wasn't the budget for it. Finally, I just said, give it to me, I'll go do it. I'm, and I got all their whole project, and that was the first time I started working on the, on the iPhone. And, and yeah, I did go ahead and, and put in the 3D acceleration, and it runs many, many times better. And that was the part where I said, oh, this is, this is fun working on the iPhone. I'm having a good time. It's back to that small project vibe. But uh, one of the things that was amusing there was we were close to memory limits on there. They were having some problems. And when I profiled through all of this, uh, I was like, uh, they're using 40 megs of core for sounds. That's our audio budget in rage. This is not right. <laughs> and they eventually compressed them down and, uh, and kind of made things work like that. But the, you know, it's many, many times more fun to kind of work on the iPhone platform than the traditional ones. But the other side of that is that the marketplace is just great. You know, the iPhone app store, it is, uh, you know, th this really is the future of a lot of the digital distribution things and the way games are going to be sold. To be able to get things out without having to go through, uh, you know, the first party licenses and the, dist uh, you know, the fabrication, all this stuff. It's great to be able to have anybody go in, get your Apple license and put a game up. And it's been great to see the success that a lot of teams have had with that. Teams that you wouldn't, you know, you're never going to see them go out and do a DS game or something like that that has a big barrier to entry. So the marketplace is... The hardware is half of it, but the marketplace really is the other half about why I'm really bullish about the iPhone. And the, the shame is that Qualcomm could have done all of that if the telecom providers had, had wanted to play ball. You know, like Qualcomm had their sort of App Store-like things that would have been better buying experiences, and people could program good games across Brew if they had better... Uh, if, the arbitrary resource limits were removed, but there was just no way to get these telecom companies to, to line up and all agree about it. They didn't care enough, and if they, you know, if they did care, they wanted a competitive advantage. They didn't want to be able to have somebody outside kind of setting things across multiple vendors' product lines on there. And, and I think that's, you know, that is a shame because there were good platforms there that could have been interesting, and I had hoped, one of my big hopes for the I, for the iPhone and the App Store was that Apple would shock the rest of the telecom providers into doing some of these things like this. But there is very little evidence that any of them have kind of gotten the message there. And at this point, we're, we're sort of giving up and stepping away from that and saying, I, you know, that we can do, we can make as much money on the iPhone and have a lot more fun doing it on that, you know, while we're there. So that's probably where we're going in the future. And we've got a big lineup. And it's, it's interesting now going from these four or five year huge development cycles where we're just, okay, you work and you work, you slog and slog, you're done, you ship it. It's kind of funny now, we're even having to schedule our iPhone releases on here where uh, the original Wolfenstein classic was me just kind of going off on a lark. That was when I had fun working on Wolfenstein RPG. I, you know, I want to play with FPS controls. And we were playing a little bit originally with Quake Arena. But then I said, well, let's do something that I can not have to worry about optimization too much, go all the way back to Wolfenstein. And it was my toy for a little while, but after a couple days, it was to this point where, hey, this is fun. Let's finish this up, make it a product. This will be our, you know, our toe in the water and see how the iPhone app store works for us. And, you know, of course, it's always one of those things where you spend two days and it looks like it's 90% done. You're like, ah, this is great, but it takes two more weeks. 
of work at least to go ahead and get to the point where you're ready to release it as a product. But we went out and it, it did great. And we got, people loved it. We changed a few things. We updated, fixed the things that people were complaining about. And that was the existence proof that the iPhone market was real. Because I had tried to go into it earlier. We wanted to port one of our, uh, like the Orcs and Elves DS game over to the iPhone. But we didn't have the right combination of the right people, the right resources. It would have taken me longer than that to do it all by myself on there. And I couldn't budget the time for it. So we, we missed the early launches that I wanted to be a part of. But once we went out there and said, hey, Wolfenstein did great on this. I, now we're pretty sold on this. And then we, uh, we did the big work with Escalation on Doom Resurrection, which was, that was actually before Wolfenstein RPG iPhone, before Wolfenstein Classic, that was the plan to be our first iPhone title. Because we were going to go out there, this will be cool, high tech on this. And it'll be a good foot forward for it, doing something that's designed from the ground up for the iPhone, designed around the controls. I, but that was a fairly big project. You know, it took the better part of a year to go through and do that, and it was reasonably high budget. It may have been the highest budget uh, iPhone title. We don't have good data across the industry on that, but it was high-end professional developers doing non-trivial amounts of work on this. And we, of course, it was an experiment trying to launch that at a premium level at $9.99. Uh, but it's done, it's earned out, uh, it's profitable, and we've got a great sale going on now. Uh, we've got the point release coming out that has new features, no, new level, uh, new stuff coming. We've got a multiplayer version that will be coming later when 3.0 adoption is universal and some other things are worked out. So planned releases for all of that, and we think that's going to wind up doing pretty well. So we can now look at sort of three lines of products that we'll be doing on mobile. We've got the Classics line, and Doom Classic has been done for, you know, more or less done for a while, and I'm kind of sitting on it because we knew we had Wolfenstein RPG coming out, we had Doom Resurrection, we got Doom Resurrection Point release, there's going to be a Platinum Wolf 3D, and we've actually got to kind of schedule these things or we're going to have iPhone releases coming out almost on top of each other. And I'm still not completely sold on the merits of that. All the business, you know, business people, it, assure me that we really do want to do this because I'm eager to say, Doom is cool, let's get it out there, and lots of people love it and all this, but if we're trying to plan our, our press releases and sort of our focus schedule, what we want to run in quick live ads and stuff like that, it's still a question on that. And when it sits there for a month, every once in a while I go back and improve it in some way, muck with the controls, improve things a little bit. Yeah, so. That's all good, but I am eager to get that out because it's a good game, it's got Wi-Fi multiplayer on there, and, uh, and it's neat. And we've got, like on the Wolfenstein Classic, the next rev of that has downloadable levels in a really cool way that we've never been able to do on our other platforms before, really taking advantage of the iPhone here, where we've got a, uh, a URL type defined for that. So you can go to a web page, click on a link, it launches Wolf, downloads the level, and starts playing it. And that's a feature in the coming update on that, which is kind of the way and the initial release of Doom won't have that, but uh, the, a point release or something later will. Uh, and I think that's, that's going to be great, because I think that's going to bring back very much sort of the golden age of level creation. Because it's as the, those of you that have been here since the beginning know that there's been this ramp of difficulty where I, you know, everyone made Wolfenstein levels. You popped it up, it's just scrubbing out tiles on there. And then anyone with a little bit of dedication could make a Doom level. Uh, making a good Doom level, of course, was a completely different question on there. But everyone made their, you know, their house or office or whatever in a Doom level and ran around and shot their boss in his, in his office. But I, it got much, much harder after that. And the barrier to entry for Quake levels uh, was up there. And then when you got all the way to the Doom 3 level, and let alone the Rage level, it's just to the point where you don't casually get into level creation nowadays. That's when you're kind of making the decision, I want to dedicate a significant chunk of my life to doing this. You know, maybe I want to get into the game industry and show people that I've got the dedication there, but it's not something you just kind of pick up on a weekend and do. 